trying to get some free stuff. <laughs> um, it's tight. Is it? Yeah, it's tight. I think we, we must... Have... What's that? It's a bit weird. Like, like normally I'd be... Last couple of years, been large on the bottom and medium on top. And then this year, oh, I'm sort post. of a mix. Um, yeah, but it is nice. Really, really nice. I think we've got the most sort of um, self-conscious fans in the world when they take off their medium shirt from Primark and then they put on their triple XL town shirt. They all sort of... <laughs> Do you want McDonald's before the game and a pint? No, no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Sounds like Macron won't help. Have you, have you seen the pictures of the, the people who bought, bought it yesterday? So if you've got a bit of a belly, I think oh, they've great. done like a size up, but then it means it looks like a nighty. <laughs> How are they? <laughs> am, I, am I basically going to walk into an away ground somewhere in the south of England looking like uh, Tom Hanks in Big? <laughs> <laughs> but it's still going to be clung to the tits as hard as possible. But I'm going to be tripping over the bottom of the... Um... Mac will just turn around and he'll just hear a thud. <laughs> like falls down behind. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we are recording this a couple of weeks before you're going to get it, so we're all still in the the heady heights of its coming home. Uh, I assume by now it's either happened gloriously. Tom is well on the positivity train, uh, but um, it might well have ended in tears. But for the time being, please forgive us if any mentions of its coming and home. Uh, do drop in every now and then. Uh, we, we are all exceptionally excited. I am joined by um, full-time eater, part-time uh, Humberside um, reporter, <laughs> Scott Woodthorpe. Scott, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. It's, I'm, I'm sweating, actually. It's quite warm. <laughs> uh, and because we're in the presence of a, a Grimsby Town legend as well. Uh, looking forward to this. You talk to Ian all the time. Um. Uh, Ian is 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 there? He's he's gone for the milk tray look like myself. Um, yeah, I just thought that was a nice introduction by Scott to say he was sweating in my presence. That was very kind of him. <laughs> it, it sounds it, it sounds it could go dodgy. Let's be honest. The, the, Tom, I'm going to come to you for some sanctity. We've already talked about the top. It is a uh, football Italian '90s Channel Four logo. It is brilliant. How is everything in Wales? Are they enjoying the England success? Uh, and no. are you happy? No, no, not at all. Are they not no. happy for their English brethren? No, of course they're not. They hate us. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I've lived in Wales, Scotland, and Ireland, and I can safely confirm that the Welsh hate us the most. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they enjoy the next couple of weeks at least. And then, of course, last but not least, Summer is on the podcast. Uh, Jace McEwen, <laughs> nice to meet you. How is everything your end? rocking the macron already yes very good um if anyone sees me in grimsby i will probably be living in macron now for however long the sponsorship deal lasts hopefully <laughs> how much do they give you do they give you quite a bit of kit or does it oh, depend no. Uh, uh, no like it's like getting blood out of a stone um i have managed to get the this year uh we're getting our kit washed which i'm pretty sure is the first time that's happened since i've been at the football club so i actually haven't got any training kit at home uh, well, I mean, that's pretty impressive. I was slightly worried that it just didn't get washed full stop then. But... <laughs> well, well, if you ask my missus in the middle of winter, she wouldn't want to wash it. It is <laughs> horrendous. Um, but yeah, so first time that we've had our kit washed. So no, I, I've no, I didn't know that. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. How long has that been yeah. for, Macca? Uh, 16 years by chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just what I've always been used to. I've just been used to you get your bag with your kit, two lots of kit, and that does you for the season. Uh, and obviously for me, especially during winter, like it's horrendous. Like your socks go like brown and it's terrible. But this year we've we've got a kit man now. Um, really nice, really nice guy. Uh, don't know what he's let himself in for, but we've got a kit man getting our kit washed. Walked in the other day and had my kit laid out in my place. And I was like, oh my God, I'm a footballer. I've made it. So it's um yeah, but it's very very nice, very nice. I'm how, I'm looking. How do you get that job as a kid? Yeah, man? I want to know that as well. Like it's a bit Tom, like the boat police, isn't it? It's one of those like jobs that you think, yes, I would definitely do that job if the opportunity came up. Boat police or kit man for a professional football club. Yeah, there never seems to be an advert for either of those two jobs. Do you know what best mo one of the most important jobs in football? Because like you're around the lads constantly, and like. The lads will be asking, yeah, you need to have, like, I, I can't, 
we haven't had a full time kit man since I've been here. I think uh, we had one, had one when I left Peterborough. Like every club I know has got one, but we just haven't had one for whatever reason. It's been like Steve Craveson did it for a bit, helped out. Andy Warrington helped out. We've had uh, Pete Roberts. We've had honestly so many uh, just help out. But this is the first full time one. It's such an important job. Did Stevie Crowson do it for a bit? Yeah, yeah. Like on a on a match day, he's obviously goalie coach and kit man. <laughs> so he's running, he's running back because he's uh, put it accidentally on a boil wash and wondering why Macca isn't getting any crosses in before the game. <laughs> so they used to have. I I can remember like when I was a kid, like you know that weird random police hook we've got. I think in the back of that there used to be like some proper commercial 1930s style like washing are you, machine. Are you on about where the um where the PA notes would sit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're still there. They're still are there. They? Yeah, just yeah. never been updated. But we don't I, no, but I don't think we use them. I don't think they're workable. The uh I think they go to a laundrette now the kit. But uh, Mr. It, it comes back clean and washed so Mr. Mr. Jack Springer's joined us trying to make Humberston look as uh, really as like... sort of Hollywood as, as possible. <laughs> Hello the boys <laughs> all right, I'm, mate. I just wanted to come and say hello to Macca. Oh, is that, is oh, that God. it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you invited him out, geez. apparently. Oh, yeah, I've got a bloody beer waiting here for him. Have, you, have you, uh, make sure you have one for me. Oh, mate, I'm delicate after last night. Crikey, I've had one. I might get a lemonade for the next round. No. Let's see, just get back on it. There's very uh, much got... a Joe. There's a Joe Lysit look about you right now, Jack. You know what? I get George Ezra at least once a month. Not Lysit. <laughs> I think it might be the shirt. That is very. That's very. I mean, I'm slightly worried. If you'd have worn that for a couple of weeks uh, before the kit launch, you might you might <laughs> have been able to pass off that Macron were doing something slightly extreme. I'm bringing the Continental to Cleethorpes, one shirt at a time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised that I'm, I'm still shocked, like Scott was, that no one washes the kit. I mean, I find that pretty incredible. Like, what was because when you talked about, I, I remember I read the um, the Telegraph interview um, this morning, and you were saying like because we had our own training ground, it felt a little professional. What mm-hmm. what are sort of the the reactions? Because we we get players from everywhere now, uh, like they've had different sort of histories. What what are the reactions normally to to the setup at the club, is it what um, we would expect as fans? Because I was surprised uh, that you said that, really. Yeah, I'd say yes and no. Um, I think I think there's some aspects where, like, I mean, obviously the last years distorted it massively because of having no fans in the ground. But and like, obviously, people, it's been it's just been so different, like not being able to have a share and things like that. Um. But overall, I'd say most people pull up initially to Cheapside and think, oh, this this is decent. Like, because it is, not every club does have their own training facilities. But then I think, not now, but certain last few years, you sort of got past that. And it's like, oh, what? You don't actually have a kit man at all. Or the pitches are like that bad. Like when you probably get past September, October at the training ground. And uh, like you, you look at the gym, the gym looks great. And then once you're actually in, there every day and it's like hold on a minute the, the wall's falling down a bit here and stuff and like uh, so I think I think it's mixed the potential's always been there but it's not ever been f- followed through and then this year we've only been back we've only been in two days uh, but all of the like, like Sean's probably the best example because obviously he's not seen it for what five years six years he come in the other day and he said to me he's like it's, it's unbelievable isn't it like the difference is amazing and like I think obviously lads that have probably joined new like can't believe maybe some of the stories I've heard from what it was like before. Um, so I, yeah, I mean the difference, like coming in, like I say, coming in the last couple of days has been. I think everybody at the football club is really trying to trying to take the club to where he probably should be. Certainly off the pitch. Jack, Jack has actually left. I di- I didn't think he was just coming to say hello to Maka. Um, <laughs> what is it? What's it like having your mate back then? So, what when? It, I assume you might have had a couple a couple of chats before. No tapping up, obviously. We don't want Deadpool on our back. But um, <laughs> w- like when he said, "Yeah, I'm coming." <clears throat> I mean, how many emojis were in that response? I guess is probably the the question I'm asking. Do you, do you know what? It happened so quickly. Like the gaffer, 
like I've got obviously I get on well with the gaffer. We got we've got like a professional relationship, but I've obviously got I've always I've always stayed in touch with him and stuff. And we get on. Never either to me or Sean. Never even hinted that he'd even be interested in signing him. And it happened within like forty five minutes. Um. He was he was so close to signing for Wrexham. He was like an hour, and I think he was an hour from going in to sign his new deal. And the gaffer just said, "How would you feel about coming back?" And then Sean Sean texted me, "Put ring me now." And I was like, "Oh my god, what's happened?" Didn't, I didn't even cross my mind. Um, and the first thing I said to him was like, "Look, even no matter because whatever people think, like, and everyone knows Sean and what Sean's like and how much he loves the club, but it's a big upheaval for your family. Like he's he's got another child during a couple of months and." They've got to move, like, he's travelling over here during pre-season. It's, it's a big ask, but I just said to him, I said, like, long-term, like, this is, like, you, you know what this club is. Like, Wrexham could be, without a doubt, they've obviously got a lot of money at the minute. The next couple of years, Wrexham could be brilliant, but they're owned by some American guys, which, how long does it last for? Do you know what I mean? Like, the people that have took over here, whatever happens, have got the club and the community at heart. Like, so for sure. And I said to him, like, not only will you love it here, you know what it's like, but I think it's just going to be even better. Um, like I said, it didn't take much persuading, but I just think, like, you've got to be realistic that he had a, he had a read, you know, he got settled there, his kids are at school and whatever. So, but it's good to have him back. I said to Gaffer, like, I love him and hate him at the same time because he irritates the life out of me. Even though he's my best mate, was best man at my wedding, he just annoys me constantly. The amount of stats, the amount of stats he comes out with are so boring. It's unbelievable. Are these unbelievable. football stats, or are these you just telling you that Salisbury Cathedral has a hundred and thirty-five meter spot? Oh no, no, no. He, he's thick as anything. No, it's it's football stats, and maybe football stats related to clean sheets when he's in the team and clean sheets when he's not in the team, and they always favour Sean Pearson. Always. Um, <laughs> Tom, can we yeah, uh, no. can we do macro solid and just um, you keep a spreadsheet of it this year? <laughs> <laughs> can you give me a spreadsheet of when me and Sean are our best cheerleaders from the bench, please? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm all I'm thinking is is Sam Strands there thinking I've just lost an amazing video of no one telling you and then just having him filming your reaction as he rocks up in at Cheapside. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, what were you going to say, Ian? Well, first of all, by the way, the description of, of Wrexham's new owners as some American guys is a bit of a downplay, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> just just some Americans have rocked up. Isn't it? So, um, I was actually just going to follow on from you talking about the training ground, to be honest, uh, Maka. And, and what is the biggest change that you've seen over the last kind of, what would be about three, four months now? Um, at the training ground itself? No, just in general in the club. Uh, attitude. I think the attitude of like I think everyone's sort of maybe potentially gone from we've always done it this way, like that's okay, to we've always done it this way, let's make it better. And like I think I, I genuinely I'm gonna stand by this now. Uh I think I think Debbie could be Debbie Cook could be like the most important signing for the club long term because I think she's gonna drive standards off the pitch. Um and listen, like I, I'm not I'm not someone who's like I wouldn't class myself as a modern footballer as such. I wouldn't class myself as a. Mo- I'm not one. To, I'm not going to sit here and say if we have the right pre-match meal and we travel to the hotel and the pitches are immaculate and the gym's got every bit of equipment that's going to win us a game on a Saturday because it's not. But what you do create, you create a professional environment, and if everything he's done right off the pitch as much as possible, as much as what our level and finances and work uh, allows you, it does give the people on the pitch and the best opportunity. You know, because at the end of the day, we're asking, we're not, we're not, we don't, we're not a club in Birmingham or Manchester. We're a club that if you're going to come here, you're coming here to play football. You know, we haven't got maybe the money that a Salford's got. So we have to attract people in certain ways. If we can attract people, it, there's a lot to be said as a footballer to actually come into work and enjoying your job. Now, I could speak to a player and say, oh yeah, listen, you'll, you'll love training under the Gaffer and Doiga. And, and they will. Training, it is now, it was when they came in. It's always been my, my most favourite time in terms of actual training. Um, but if you're inviting people in and like, you know, silly things, there's, there's a telly on the wall in the gym. So there's like music in the gym. They're, they're Like I say, they're tiny little things that people wouldn't, and they're not going to win you three points on a Saturday, but 
they create an, a work ethic. They make people want to stay around the training ground. So you build relationships. All these little things, I think, add up. And I think, like I say, with Debbie coming in, I think she will make sure that standards off the pitch and, and things off the pitch run as smoothly as possible. Like, I mean, silly things go wrong. Like last year, we went to, I think it was Bradford, and we turned up and we hadn't booked the pre-match hotel. So um, we were... <laughs> Sort of skating around uh, the local Morrisons to try and get some pre-match together. Um, Stephen Payne was furious, what... apparently. <laughs> 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 well, well, exactly. Look at look how wrong that went. Um, at least you don't lose a game because of that. But if that happens regularly and things and things like that happen regularly, it, it adds up, and people just think, "Oh, this is rubbish. I don't want to be here." And, you know, not whatever people think. You know, not all footballers have an affinity to a football club. Most footballers in general are mercenaries. They'll either go where they enjoy it or where they're paid the most. So if we can't pay them the most, let's make sure they enjoy it. It's, it's, it's quite simple, really. It's a, I remember there was a story about Jose Mourinho or something saying that, um, that well, I think one of the refs, I think it was Klattenberg or someone said, uh, he had a chat with him when he just joined Chelsea and he was like joking about how the ru- rubbish the referee's room was. And then the next time he came back, like six months later, it was a new bit, new room with with sofas in, Sky Sports, 45-inch TV on the wall and the like. He got two penalties that day, apparently, as well. To be but... fair, our ref room's out of sync in it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? The, the the changing rooms are, I think the bath's getting taken out, the bath that has potentially been there. Well, the one from the Maybe. 20s? Maybe longer than the football club itself, um, <laughs> but I think it's getting taken out after the uh, the game on the twenty fourth. So, uh, yeah, lots of lots of changes, lots of changes. That that looked like a massive hazard. I've only seen it from videos, but it looks like it takes one bloke to slip on the soap and then they break their neck. Honestly, if, if well, I mean, obviously as a goalie, don't really do much. But as an outfield player, if you've got to step over this giant step to go for a shower in this old bath. It, it's he's bringing cramp on. It's <laughs> horrendous. Um. All right. First question from everyone. Uh, let's go past the "Is Holloway any good at darts?" questions because there's about thirty of them. Um. Is he any good at darts? Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Play, lots of practice. <laughs> lots of practice. Genuinely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hannah asked a question, even though she's on the podcast. Uh, what have you learned from the last promotion season that you think will be important for the lads to take into next season? Uh, I would say, and, and I mean, for me, that that group and the year before, but making sure the togetherness is there. Now, you can't force that as a group, but I think, I think what happened the year we got promoted with Operation Promotion in the summer does remind me of this summer a little bit. Um, I feel that there's a connection come back from the fans to the football club. So I think as a football club now, and I think we are, I think we're using that and making the most of that. And I think throughout the season, if we can build that relationship between the fans and the players, that'll be massive. And then the players themselves building that togetherness. Um, Because the, the, the thing that will always stand out, if you ask any of the lads who got promoted that year, was when we were driving... I think we lost on the, I can't remember the day we lost, but the next day we were in for a cool down and drove to Oasis gym and going over the flyover and the first out banner that someone had kindly put up. Um, and because of the relationship we had as a group, that that honestly, that that made such a difference. Um, we felt like we owed the gaffer one. And like, listen, you, when you go out and you play night, it's the other thing like, you could have someone could say to you, you can win a million pounds for this match. You still you still can only play as best as you can play. Doesn't make any difference. But just you always seem to just you know a team's together. And you look at like obviously England might have at this point won the Euros, but you look at England and I look at Italy and the teams that are going deeper in the competition seem to have that togetherness. You watch them celebrate, things like that. So I think we have to take that. We have to take the the good feel in the town and in the community forward now. And make the most of it. Yes, Scott. What do you want? What gonna... do you want? Sorry. What question would you like to? Ask? What do you want? <laughs> I was going to say this for a while. I was going to say to James that promotion season started with you contracting meningitis. Is that right? Yeah. Um... Pre season. So what? You know, it's not exactly the the most ideal start to the season, is it? You know how how bad was it for you? 
well, I don't know if anyone remembers my performances, but they were absolutely horrendous. And it sort of culminated in, I think I come back into, uh, I, I was I was actually really old. Like I wasn't I didn't train for a week. I'd pulled out the North Ferriby pre season game, uh tried to play, but I couldn't breathe. And then I went in on the Friday. More at Dave Moore said to me, Yeah, just go home and rest for the weekend. <laughs> I got back and collapsed. And luckily my missus was off work because she was like under the weather. I, I was having none of it. So she called an ambulance and um, I woke up in bed and the best looking ambulance driver I've ever seen in my life walked in. And I felt like, you know, you feel like a child. I was under the quilt, like shivering in, in like my training kit, probably stinking. And this guy walks in with massive, look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I just felt like immediately I felt better. Um, but yeah, I, I, was, I was quite, I was quite ill. But um, when I came out, I, I, the Kidderminster was the first game of the season. Everyone remembers how good the fans were that day. Lots of people seem to forgot that I think I kicked a back pass off someone and they scored, or miss kicked it and he went behind me and they scored. Um, and then Macclesfield at home dropped a cross at the back post, and then we played Alt Drugham away on the Tuesday and I dropped another cross. And as we was walking off, a fan shouted, "You'll never get promoted with him in goal." Uh, obviously, silly idiot here said something back. And then the police came in the changing room. Um, and throughout all that, and this again, this is something like the gaffer stuck by me. And I remember him getting loads of stick, like, or what felt like loads of stick. It probably wasn't, but saying he should have dropped me and whatever. And obviously he stood by me and, and I managed to obviously sort of turn it around a little bit. But um, yeah, I don't know, like looking back now, and maybe I'll come back too soon, but at the same time, like I wouldn't change that because... I don't mind that criticism really because, like I, 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 like I said, I still remember it now, but it almost inspires you to, to want to prove people wrong. It's, it's a couple a really of times. Interesting... Sorry, uh, Alex. No, yeah. no, it's all right. I'm just looking through Cod Almighty now, seeing if I can find any reference to him <laughs> for Mackie dropping a, dropping a cross. Oh, chunk of away it was. Oh, chunk anyway, You'll find a few, refer- a few references to me dropping a cross. That's for sure. <laughs> Was Alt- was that was the Altrincham game the goal that didn't go in? Oh yeah, that did. Yeah, sorry, yeah, it did. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It that was game. a night game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that yeah, and a drop like, but uh, people are different, and like our fans, especially our away fans, are so passionate, and like I I like that. Like, uh, there's been times when I've like had a nibble back when people have said things, and I actually I actually enjoy playing with that because, like, say. I've always enjoyed trying to prove people wrong. I don't know if that's maybe a mindset of a goalkeeper because you are on your own to a degree. Whereas I've had players come here who are honestly Louis Soares. I don't know if anyone remembers Louis Soares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said his name was Louis Suarez, didn't he, when he first came? Yeah, well, I, I couldn't remember what foot he was. He was unbelievable. He only seen training, he was unbelievable. And he was just an example of, for me, a player that just couldn't play in front of our crowd because yeah. of the pressure. Everyone reacts differently because... He had so much talent, so so much talent. And that that away end at Altrincham is brutal, isn't it? Because you right, the away fans are right on top of the goal net, aren't they? Yeah, they are literally next to you. It couldn't have been a worse game to do it in. The, the, the guy who shouted it was about four foot away from me. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, on sort of criticism from fans and stuff. Um, obviously that drives you to improve. Uh, have, have you got a goalkeeper coach this year? And when you had Andy Warrington as a goalkeeper coach, did you think, uh, I, I guess Steve Crowton's done a bit over the years as well, did you think that um, that brought your game on a, a lot um, like over the 10 years that you've been in the club? Do you think that's massively helped? Yeah, um, I couldn't. I'd put I'd put my biggest influence down potentially as Steve, to be honest, as a coach. Um, I had two things with Steve that I thought he was brilliant at, and I think that's probably why he's at, he's been to Hull, and then he's obviously at Lincoln now. Um, he absolutely demands from you, and he also backs you hundred percent. We used to have like proper arguments, like I mean, people <laughs> definitely my missing state, but and the gaffer probably would still like I'm still like a bit stroppy and whatever, and for a tantrum and like 
if if me and Steve clashed over summer, we'd clash, but it would be forgotten straight away. And like like I say, you are you are on your own. And like when you come off and you've made a mistake, no matter what people say, you, you go to bed and you sat there and you think about it and stuff. Steve was brilliant, like unbelievable like that. As a coach, he was fantastic. Loved the sessions. And like I say, demand, we worked really hard. And he put me on a diet when I first came, which made a massive difference to me. Um, he just, and like, he sort of introduced me to the gym, um, which I've carried on throughout my whole career. But he was like, I knew, no matter, if he, if he thought I should have saved a goal or something, he'd tell me to my face. But he'd also back me to the manager. And not many goalie coaches do that, I've noticed over the years. Uh, a lot of them are quite happy to sort of... The manager says, he should have saved that. He should have come for that cross. Yeah, yeah, he should have done. But then they'll say to you privately, oh, yeah, you couldn't, couldn't really have done that. So I don't like that. I like that honest relationship. And, and Woggy was the same. Andy Warrington was like the most nervous man I've ever met. Like the most nervous man. We, we played Braintree in the playoff semi-final away. And he got steaming in the bar the night before. And all he kept saying to me in the wall was, I can't do this again. I can't do this again. Me head's pounded. Me head's pounded. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that was you ain't even got a plan. You ain't got to sit there with some sun cream on. Um, do, you, do you think that the um, the relationship, because the way that this team has been set up before is that your goalkeeping coach can at times be, essentially, you're the next in line to, to be keeper. Do you think that sometimes is a conflict of interest? Yes. Without a doubt. It definitely has been, without a doubt. Um, like, Woggy, Woggy did do it when we were back in the conference because, uh, but Woggy didn't want to do it. Woggy had no interest in playing. He'd, he'd, he'd absolutely no interest in playing. <laughs> when I see him put his elbow pads on for training, he's just giggling. Um, but yeah, it's hard because, like, for me, I, I don't care if I'm 31 or 21. I want someone to want to improve me and want to push me. And I still think there's elements to improvement. Like, of course, you, you're obviously a lot more set in your ways with stuff, but whether that's the right training or what, you know, you can be improved. Uh, whether that's mentally, physically, off the pitch, on the pitch, there's, there's loads of ways. Um, and I want, and you want someone to do that, but it's obviously very difficult. If someone also is doing that, but wants to play or wants to take your place. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, is the answer to your question. And, it, and, it, and I, I guess a kind of related question. How nervous are you for your position now Sean is back? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, he's not bad either. He's not bad, which pains me to say. I um, Do you know what? And I, I, this is the other thing. And I say, I've said it so much. And people, are, people are, if I'm playing badly, people are like, oh, he's got no competition. But... I just think that's really disrespectful to, at times, some of the goalies. Like, because we had Greg Fleming uh, one year. When he played, he didn't concede. He was he was actually really good. But I'd done enough to, to stay in the team. And, like, we've had some good goalies, like, really good goalies. And when we haven't had good goalies, potentially, or we haven't had what you would class as, what some people would class as competition, like, I think a couple of years ago under Michael Jolly, when... There was like, we, I think for whatever reason, we didn't really have a, a second goalie as such. Um, I probably had my best season. So I don't buy into the competition because I just think that you you push yourself no matter what. And I'm like, if, I, if I'm lucky enough to start the season this year and I have a stinker for the first three games, the gaffer, whether, if he's brought someone in by then or if he hasn't brought someone in, he's going to bring someone in. Like, I'm not an idiot. So, you know, I don't, yeah, I, I think that competition is... Uh, I think you know your place is always under pressure. And in football, people are always looking for the next thing as well. So I've got 12 months left on my deal. Like, I've no doubt that the gaffer's looking at keepers now and even potentially for next year because that's what happens. So you're always fighting against that. So it doesn't really matter if someone's in the building or not for me. Did, uh, did Stevie ever tell you about his debut with Wolves? I assume that might have come up. That has come up many, many times. And also what came up when I first signed was, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but Kettering away the year before I signed. I think that's, uh, did he dislocate his shoulder or his elbow mid-game? Yes, he'd he done so. He was playing. Uh, I think Dave was caretaker at the time. And I think they had a long throw. And all, I, all Dave will tell me this all the time about Kraus and just stood on his line shouting, away, away. <laughs> he has every right to bring up that Wolves game. Best ever Grimsby Town <laughs> debut, in my opinion. It wasn't 
it, it was quite funny. Yeah, it was it was great. Um, Matt, was who, the, sorry, Alex. Who, who, I don't go ahead. Who, who was the goalkeeping coach who who was at the club? Pete was it? For, he was at the club for about a day last season. I God, thank God, <laughs> thanks Scott. I'd have forgotten that. Pete Williams. Pete Williams came in. To... <laughs> <laughs> For the, uh, for the tape. Is anyone uh, going to shake my face? Yeah. James has got his hand in his head. The head in his hands. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, he was, he was in for a day and he took me, Ollie Battersby and Sam, the current governor coach for a session. Uh, it was raining, freezing and he just spoke. It was, he couldn't serve so he threw it. Then Ian left and he, he was quitting in the office with him. And I'm thinking, how can you quit when you haven't got the job? Then Ian said to me, oh, I've asked Pete to stay on and stand by you. I didn't see him again. He was, oh, I can't. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm going to write a book on that. <laughs> I mean, I get, okay, this is the one question I wanted to ask. And then, uh, I mean, we can tie into the, the car crash of last year, but um, of that part of it anyway. Um, WhatsApp groups. That, that This is the serious question I want to ask a current player because I can't ask Steve Livingston because he was still using Blackberries or whatever it was. Uh, but um, is there an official club WhatsApp group? Who is the admin? And then is there like a, uh, like a secret one that Hursty isn't a part of? Where, where you so... Have- there is, there is this too. There is uh, Grimsby Town Football Club. What are we? Tw- are we 20, 20, uh, 21, 22? Does that get... got yeah. players and staff in, but the gaffer's not in it. The gaffer okay. doesn't want to be in it. Um, but he's got the rest of the staff in. So, obviously, lads report this time if, if, some, if something's going on, basically. It's a very professional one. Uh, there is, is the training Grimsby at Town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is the Grimsby Town Helpline FC. Uh, with a pain, pain stretcher for the picture, um, which is just players only, which is the one that is used to absolutely batter any any story that happens in the day. Right, I'm good. I'm glad. I'm glad we've got some airtime. Um, what? Who, who? I mean, what's the etiquette? So, is that is the new one sort of been set up for this season, or was it sort of just changed the name of last? See, this is the. I'm thinking office politics here. Well, like it, well, well, this is this is true because I'm the admin. Yes. So, so how, what's a grace period that somebody has before they well, get up the? I give. I, give I normally give someone. You know, say someone's left the club, I give them a week. Like Jay Mateta. Jay Mateta. A lot of the lads don't want the notifications going off, so leave straight away. <laughs> You'll literally get thanks for everything, lads. See you later, and they leave before even anyone's replied. Jay Mateta was an example. I went through it the other week because I was trying to add the new signings, and I was like. What's Jay Matei doing on there? <laughs> oh, I'll have to remove him. So I just removed him. Um, like, no, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, people, are, people are normally, like I say, they are literally like end of the end of the season just gone. And it, it's horrible because you don't, you have your, like your little meeting slots. Yeah. You don't actually always get to see everyone. And they'll just drop a message in saying, that's me, lads, all the best. And before you've even had a chance to really, like I say, to message back, they've already gone and, but you always try and drop someone a text at some point. Um, but yeah, so it's the same group, same name, but just new faces. You just, I can imagine you're there in Bradford. You've still got your, like, you're, you're both searching for a hotel and also going, kick, kick Stefan out of the group, will you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had, we had uh, like a players get together at the end of the season, which was a long overdue. Uh, and I was actually half expecting to turn up, but he didn't. He didn't turn up, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, someone else has got to ask a question now because I've asked all the serious ones. Well, I, I've got another one. Um, so I work with Paul Walker, Macca, <laughs> and he's asked me to say what happened on Sean Pearson Stag do. <laughs> Is he? Uh, well, I don't know which bit he's referring to, but I presume. When we were walking home after pub golf at about three o'clock in the morning uh, through Leeds, walks was about, and I'm not exactly, he was two yards in front of me. And I had, a, I had the golf ball from pub golf and I have thrown it. And once I was accurate and I've absolutely pinged him off the back of the head and he literally, he nearly collapsed. But the best it was, I denied doing it. There was no one else near me and I just kept denying it. 
but he was that drunk. He was like, oh, and he just rubbed his head for about 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, yeah, walks are great, lad. Great, lad. Look forward to him tackling, tackling someone in a couple of weeks' time when we play Clean Thorpes. Well, I wouldn't get too excited about that. I've seen him play real recently. <laughs> it's when we find Paul is running straight towards Macca for no particular reason. <laughs> and it's, it's like, he's going two-footed here. What's he doing? <laughs> Holding a golf ball at the same time. Um, right. Questions from everybody. Uh, I, I guess, who's been the most naturally gifted footballer during your time at the club? Was that Louis Swartz? Uh, no, Scotty Nelson. Scotty okay. Nelson was, my God. He used to, <laughs> he, I, can't, I won't say this because I can't say the gaffer's name. I wouldn't even, even to my missus, I wouldn't say his actual real name. Um but he used to call the gaffer like by his proper name at times. Like, he just was the most bothered lad in the world. Like he'd go on a night out, get steaming, he'd come in for training, but what a player. Like, and in that team, he was exactly what we needed, like at that time, because we had we had a lot of people who worked hard, like Lenny and Ross worked so hard up front. And like I think Derek Niven was in that team and he was an absolute workhorse and like, we had people who worked so hard. And Scotty, when he came in, I remember the game against Luton at home. I think we won 3 1. Might have been on the telly. And he was just like, he just had moments of like utter brilliance. He could, it's such a shame that he probably didn't play. I had all the ability in the world, but he was just the one of a better phrase. He was just a lad. He just, he just was a lad. He just wanted to go out, girls, drink, and whatever. But like, talent wise at the club, he was, he was unbelievable. Um, he looked like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly that. He, the thing was, he could have played, could have played Bournemouth at home on a Tuesday night, and he'd been in faces on the on, on Wednesday morning at two o'clock. So that that was Scotty. But again, the gaff the gaffer managed him really well. So sort of like, and and the lads loved him. Like, this is the thing that I think sometimes people people look at players maybe from the outside and are like, oh, you wouldn't want him in your dressing room. But like, you know that it takes lots of different characters. You couldn't have eleven Sean Pearsons couldn't have 11 people want to head a wall. Like, it just wouldn't work. Or, you know, so, like, you do need that, like, maverick, if you like, that one who's a little bit, everyone's almost managing. And But he was, like I say, yeah, talent-wise, he was unbelievable. Who, who's Who's got your number? What Which one player has figured you out? The, the one that you really hate coming up against? Oh, um, John Akindi penalties. Yeah. <laughs> nobody likes this if anyone wants to get that stat up that could be about 9-0 to him um, yeah I, I despise facing his panel I despise him because I just don't know where he's going and like even when I know where he's going I can't get there um, he's yeah, had a lot of practice get, definitely definitely opposition wise him by a mile he was just like I just could never get a read on him and even games where like where, where I've thought where we've been the much better team and stuff and you just get a goal or you do something that, like I've always hated playing against him really over the years what I, I, do you know what? I, I, I kindy had gone out of my head but yeah of course I assume he might be around next year but um uh what did Podge say to you when he was stood in front of you at Newport can you remember that free kick oh, the free kick yeah don't even know what the, the thing is with Podge, and I'm, I'm in a WhatsApp group with Podge, Sean, and Diz still. Um, we went to Cheltenham about five years ago. We, we, I think we went twice, and we've never been back since. But we keep changing the year in the WhatsApp group, even though we still haven't gone back together. And uh, I just switch off to what he says, to be honest. I, I, lo- I love Podge, but he's so boring. He's so boring. Um, even the new lads we signed, uh, Ryan Taylor and David Long, really like him, but bore- boring. Uh, but do you know what? Pod, Podge is another one, to be fair, because he's a he's a he is an absolute goal scorer, and he's obviously every, he feels like every time we play him, he scores. Um, he's he was fantastic here, and I, I do really like Podge because uh, I remember he got a bit of stick for that. I'm sure he got a bit of stick for that for dancing in front of me and whatever. But yeah, I probably said something. It, <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, yeah he's he's another one to be fair with a kinder um, not so much in training with Podge like we do finishing in training like but in games playing against him since he does really seem to score past me actually Jesus I'll stop I yeah. mean this doesn't sound like we should be continuing <laughs> this is, 
<laughs> the gaffer's not going to be playing this all next year. No, he can't play against him. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, what's your what's your your photograph moment? Which was which is the save or the performance that you you go back to time and again that you're proud most proud of? Uh, I'd probably say Wrexham in the trophy final. Um, yeah, that was. I, I think we lost that, but over the years, that's like losing. It sort of softened the blow because. Like I, I did, I did okay in the game. Uh, so I'd say Wrexham overall because the, I've said it a couple of times. As well. I remember Rob Scott saying it. I think it was half time and extra time. He said something like, "Oh, the form is in. We can't lose this." And then I think I saved, I saved one in the last minute. Went to penalties and went the wrong way. So um, that obviously lives with me quite well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, extra away. Uh, yeah. I think. It's hard because there's been a couple where you feel like you play well, but you lost. So it doesn't really count for much. So, but I'd, I'd, de- I'd say the the Wrexham definitely in the just because of where it was as well, like first time playing at Wembley and whatever. Was it as cold for you? Tell- well, this was but everyone always tells me how freezing it was, but yeah. I cannot remember. I, I can't remember. Yeah, bloody Baltic. It I, was my, horrible. Absolutely my balls still horrible. have not descended. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what was cold going to. Uh, Hartlepool to play Gateshead on the Tuesday night. We lost on the Sunday. We came in for a cool down on the Monday. They got rid of Richard Brody, thank God. And then we went to Hartlepool and played Gateshead on the Tuesday and drew one all. And it was and it snowed. I remember standing there thinking, this is not like Wembley. <laughs> you say thank God there. Quite a few people who we've interviewed have said that Richard Brody was not that bad in the changing rooms and Things like that. So that's a bit of a, a turn there, Maka. Do, do you know, like, as a lad, there's, there's not been many that I could sit here now and say, to I didn't get on with him or we clashed or whatever. Um, and he, was, he wasn't a bad lad, but I thought for the changing room, as a group, he needed to go because he was... Some people can take certain characters, but that group and, like, I, him and Cookie, I don't know if they're still friends, Andy Cook, but... They had a weird relationship. Like they were like mates, but used to fight and like argue and fall out. And I just didn't think he was a great influence um, on him. And yeah, I like I say, I, not not a bad lad, but he was definitely the right decision at that time. I thought to to move him on because this is where and the gaffer's very good at it. But like the the group is the most important thing. Like without a shadow of a doubt this season it will happen like there'll be times when people will get left out like myself included no doubt at at times and you know as an individual you you think about your future you think about loads of things when it goes on like it's not fair or whatever but the the, ultimately we all want the same thing if we're if we're if we do another podcast and Tom Simon we've got promoted literally who cares who cares what's gone off if we've got this club promoted so the group is always the most important thing um and he, he just wasn't great for the group, really. What I mean, we'll go bandage wise then. So we'll we'll go band aid wise and rip it off. What happened with the transfer request? And does the fact that now Henderson is in the England squad help a little bit in that that the only person to really take the number one shirt off me now plays for England? Hey, it is on my CV. Uh, it's my like my claim to fame is he sat on the bench for me for four months, and I will live with it forever. I don't care. He had to sit on the bench for me. <laughs> um, do you know what? It, it, the weirdest, I, we obviously signed him on deadline day uh, and immediately like, I'm thinking, this lad's good. This lad's good. But obviously, I, I did enough to stay in the team. Like, I did okay. Uh, and we went on the Christmas do. I think I'm, I might be wrong on the date. I've got the 17th of December in my head. I think we played Donny away. We lost 1-0 to a free kick in the first minute. Went over the wall, top corner. I didn't have a great game, but we only lost one nil. I went at fault for the goal. Uh, went on the Christmas do. He was like, oh, I'm going back, I'm going back to Man United and whatever. And I thought, oh, I've done it. And then I think the club released summer on the 23rd of December. Is Dean Henderson in line to make his debut? And I'm thinking, that's weird, because why would the club do that three days before a game? Uh, then we went in on Christmas Eve to train. And we always did with, with Wagate, the same session on a Friday. And a different session was set up. And I was walking out and Moggy went, oh, I'm sorry, the gaffer's not called you. So he'd obviously told Dean and the club obviously knew that he was playing. So straight away, I was like, if you're going to drop me, at least at least have the balls to pull me or like, and just tell me dropping me. 
So I went straight in after training. Um, and I was like, 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 what's going on? I need to have a look at him to see if he's good enough. I was like, and that was pretty much my face. If anyone is listening, obviously, I've rolled my eyes right into my head. Um, because I was like, anyone can see he's good enough. Like, there were genuine, t- and I, I, swear on my, I swear on my kid's life, there was times that year where I'd wake up in the middle of the night panicking that I was going to get dropped because he was that good. I used to think, Dean, just have a day off, will you? Just let me have a session where I can be rubbish because he was he was that good. Like, but I'd obviously, like I said, I'd done okay. I'd done enough to stay in the team, but everyone could see how good he was. Like, and we had, we had a, we still, I spoke to him last week. Like, he's talking about coming to the testimonial things. People think that we didn't get on. Like, we still speak. Like, we get on well. Um, we had a, a competitive relationship where we both wanted to outdo each other. But that wasn't a bad thing at that time. Uh, but anyway, so obviously I, I went to Marcus like, well, that's just a lie. Like you can see he's good enough. Um, and he went, he went backwards and forwards. So obviously I didn't play. Uh, and then we got into the, I got into the early December, early January. And I said to him, went in to see him again. I was like, look, and obviously Dina got off to a good start. Uh, kept a clean, couple of clean sheets, played well. I was like, what's going on? You know, I don't, I don't want to sit on the bench for him for the rest of the season. I want to, I want to play games if I can. Uh, and he was like, well, we'll help you get out on loan. And then nothing really happened. And then we got towards the end. And then he told me I could, basically I went back in. And he was like, I'm going to extend Dean's loan. You're not going to play. Uh, so you are, you, you can go. I said, I'm at that point where I think I had 18 months left on my deal, but I've been told by the manager I'm not going to play. We've got a lad on loan. If he's coming on loan for Man United and he's playing, he's playing well, I'm not going to play. I didn't have any respect for Marcus because of the, how he handled it. If, if he was dropping me, which has happened since, just drop me and be honest. Like, just tell me why you're dropping me. That's not a problem. Like, I won't agree with it because you back yourself, but just be honest. And I think that's what players always want. Um, so I never trusted him. Uh, and we'd, we'd, we'd had yeah I'll go on to that in a bit but so yeah so anyway uh, obviously the, the potential of the move came up there was Shrewsbury and Luton uh, and I, I sort of listen I shouldn't have handed in a transfer request because it ended up painting me as a bad person I think but uh, I was at that point where I just I just couldn't I, I hated it I hated coming in uh, I hated being around Marcus I, I didn't think I was going to play at all uh, but obviously the move never came off for a couple of reasons. Uh, I think they wanted a massive loan fee off Luton, uh, which was like silly at the time. Uh, and it, yeah, so it never came off. And then I think that was on the Tuesday. And then on the Thursday, I'd coached the academy goalies and then got in my car and Dean had gone back to Man United. I played Luton on the Saturday. It was like, you literally couldn't write what had happened. And then after the game, I think I saved a pen in the last minute. And after the game, uh, he came up and shook my hand and there's a picture of it and he went to me, I knew you were going to do that and I was, I shook his hand back like a little bitch, didn't I? But like, I was thinking, I don't want to shake your hand. Um, and then we, we had like, I just, I'd gone from having the gaffer who, like I say, would be honest with you, he thought I was playing rubbish, he'd tell me, training was good, he was always the first person in the building so having a manager who rocked in at 10.30 would have a meeting for an hour and a half it just, I just didn't enjoy it. And he had lots and lots of good ideas. So I don't want it to come up. Like, he had loads of things as a coach. What I thought, do you know what? He, he, he knows his stuff. But just for the way he personally treated me, that, like, that, that, was, that was the thing, really. I just, I just didn't like it. Do you think that's often overlooked in management? That the sort of, you are, first and foremost, a manager. And man management is the primary role of your, your job. It's not just being a, a tactical guru or a transfer genius. Well, that should have a doubt. And I think, I think people, people get lost sometimes and think that it's like football management, so that's what's important. Like, whatever... I use Gareth Southgate as an example at the minute, but he, you can clearly see the players enjoy playing for him. You can see that, like, yeah, he changes the formation, he changes the, the, the people. And like, I love Jack Grealish and there's loads of clamour for Jack Grealish to play. But Jack Grealish comes on and still does a job. So he's doing something, right? He, when they won the other night against Ukraine, he put his arm around Jack Grealish after the game. Like He could have been saying anything to him. But like I look at that and I just, I, I just 
it can be applied to any walk of life in any job. It is management. Of course, a manager has to have a feel for a game, substitutions, things like that, like analysing data or whatever. But it's man management on a day-to-day basis. It's keeping the players that aren't in the team happy. That is what is really key. And that's the same in any job. If you've got a couple of employees who are brilliant, like they're easy to manage. It's the ones that you maybe got to try and get a bit more out of. Or, you know, in our case, if, if they haven't played on a Saturday and they're, tra- they're the group train on a Monday day, they're the ones that have to be feeling good enough to drive the standards still and make sure that training's good. Because what happens is, and this is what happened loads last year, plan a Saturday, in general, the outfield 10 wouldn't train on the Monday. They do a cool down, this two day modern day recovery rubbish. So the lads who didn't play would train. And I would always train because it's I've always preferred to train. Uh, so I'd try and the standard was nowhere near the same. So then the other lads come out on the Tuesday and the standard's been poor on the Monday. Everyone's a bit like arsy with each other. And it just it sort of motors in through the week. That's it's massive. Keeping the players who are not, not in the team happy is the most important thing by my in any job. There's quite a few to manage last year then. There was about thirty there was about three and a half thousand of you. <laughs> that was quite a lot. <laughs> Tom, what did you want to ask? Yeah, I was just wondering, you touched on um, Rob Scott there when you were talking about the trophy final. I remember when Paul Hurst and Rob Scott first came, uh, I think we played Darlington and I was in the pontoon stand and Rob Scott had an argument with um, a few fans after the game because there was a lot of criticism. Um, And I remember sort of thinking, oh, you know, that's not great. They've they've come from the part-time game in Boston and made the step up to albeit in the conference, the professional game now. You can't really, in my opinion, you can't really do that. You have to take that criticism on the chin. For you personally, what was the, because obviously you'd been on loan um, from Peterborough at Boston in a season when they'd done fairly well under Scott and Hurst. What was the difference coming from Boston to Grimsby for you? And, and, and was that a big change? Um, it was... Obviously, I was, on, I was on loan at Boston. So I used to actually, when I signed at Boston, they said I only had to train on a Thursday night and I could still train at Peterborough. And I, st- I ended up basically training on it. They trained a Tuesday and a Thursday night. I still trained on a Tuesday and a Thursday morning at Peterborough. And I just did the Thursday and Tuesday night still. So in terms of my training, I actually was doing more. Um, I remember that game so well. Uh, <laughs> that, I think we lost 3-1 that game. I'm sure Sean scored an own goal in that game. I'm sure he did. Um, I'll check for you. Um, I think we lost three one, and he stuck he stuck a silly foot out when he was coming into my hands. Uh, yeah, blame Sean. Sure. Um, our, the 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 difference, I think, because I'd left Peterborough and I went on loan. To, oh, I didn't go on loan. Sorry, I signed in Holland for six months, and that was, I absolutely loved it. But it was, it was so far removed from day to day professional football like it was here. Um, it was a lot different coming back, but I remember I remember that with Scotty. And you know what? Monday to Friday, he was an, a good coach and a nice guy. Like people have always looked at the gaffer, I think, out the two of them. And I did when I signed at Boston and thought, ah, oh, you know, uh, Scotty's the aggressive one and the gaffer's like the nice one. You couldn't be any further from it. The gaffer is ruthless. And like he's the one, not, not a shouter still. Like Scotty on a match day would absolutely, he was like a bag of nerves. And that's why I don't think management was for him because I don't think he could control his nerves because he'd just go mental and he wouldn't be getting the best out of people. Um, I don't like my, I don't think you can do that as a manager. I remember Bigger's done it when we went, was it Crew Away when he went over to the fans when we got B5? Yeah. yeah. If I'm ever a manager, it's not something I would do. But at the same time, I've done it as a player. So I can appreciate that it's difficult at times to not say something. But as a manager, I do think you've got to rise yourself above it because for every time you want to nibble back at criticism, are you going to hook someone when they praise you? Because it, it is so fickle. And people's emotions are coming out and you have to be the one. And that's the difference for me as a manager. You have to be the one that's calm. When everyone else is like losing it or whatever, it's not going well. You've got to have a bit of clarity in your thinking. Um, obviously, I mean, the big, the biggest difference from Boston 
and even Peterborough to a degree for me, even though we're in the championship, like the biggest difference was our fans. Our fans are just like the the best, most passionate fans you could get. Like we're we're doing this podcast here. At Peterborough, you probably well, I don't know how many listeners we'll get, but at Peterborough we'll probably get about two listeners. Like I I, I just think our fans, like for our fans, like this football club means so, so much. So, so much. And I don't think you can put it into words until you actually go out and see it, maybe on a Saturday. No, Nando's in there. That's that's what changes it. Second Grimsby and Cleethorpe's get a Nando's. All attention will lose. <laughs> You're not wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> Do you think that'll help attract a, a higher calibre of player going if we have a, a Nando's sort of within at least half a mile, half a, like half an hour of town? Sort of thing. That's that's my major I, thing. I, I'm I, I am 100% on board. Like I literally I exercise to eat, and I need a Nando's and various other food outlets. The one thing that everyone is always amazed at when they come in, you've got a Taco Bell. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. like what a Taco Bell? There's no Taco Bells around. Like no, there's one in Grimsby. <laughs> Redin Redin's got a Wendy's now. I didn't even know that was a thing. Where is it? I didn't. I didn't know it was a thing anymore. Uh, we'll, be, we'll probably get a little chef. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we used to. Oh, that. Where is it? That. Um, Birchin Way. La- and that. the Laceby Acres, isn't there as well? Laceby Acres, where yeah, there's yeah. that new petrol station and the Greg's. Yeah. Was, I, I had my fifth oh, yeah. birthday party in there. <laughs> Mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it was rancid. Uh, speaking of speaking <laughs> of food, James, what's what's the? I've seen all the players get uh, a Domino's delivery after after a game. What's what's the crack with that? Is that you know? Is that is that is that your your request? It's my, it's what my kids eat every every Saturday because <laughs> I cannot stand it. the the play The players don't like it. Like so, it's it, I did change a bit. To be fair, towards the end of the year, Greg, who's the sports science fitness coach, sort of like lads, sort of said to him, "Look, we can't have any more Domino's." Because it was getting to the point where we're having all these Domino's delivered and no one was eating it because it was just every day, like. Away from home is a bit different, I understand, because we haven't had the facilities to, say, cook or whatever. You know, when we've... Because our driver uh, does Hall's first team, and, like, they'll get on the bus, and I watch Ben Foster loads on his YouTube, and, like, they've got a chef after a game. It's like, oh, my God. I remember at Wembley, after we lost to Bristol Rovers, like, I'm heartbroken, but I remember thinking, God, this food's a good spread. Like, they had, like, spaghetti bolognese out the back and all sorts. I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, here we go. Um, but yeah, so I get I get away games that Domino's is easy, you can get it anywhere. Um, Forest Green do the best ones. They're called Fat Tonys. They're, they're you live for them. But home games we like change up a bit at the end of last year. And this is another thing like where I think it, we use the counting house quite a bit in the end. Uh, and their pastas and stuff were were really good. But the Domino's, I basically I just get a few. Like, people think I must be so greedy. Like, I look at him walking out of a Domino's. I just tell the kids I'll bring my Domino's home, so they're they're buzzing. So yeah, we we've got a bit more of a say in it now, and like I said, I think that's another thing that will change moving forward, where um, the food will be what I'd, I'd say proper food probably after a game, where it's like pasta and that, because yeah, the Domino's is just a convenience thing really, and it's right. sick it's, it. it's not about carving up then after having spent it all. Yeah, that's it's like that is basically what it is. It's just to get as many carbs in you as possible. Um, but you just get to the point. I know it sounds silly, but you just get to the point. You see the same pizzas coming out, and it's just like, mm, nah. So, uh, but yeah, it is uh, after a game. I mean, I, I am actually quite good Monday to Friday in terms of what I eat. A Saturday night, I'm horrendous. Like it's an absolute blowout. Like to the point where you're feeling sick that you can't breathe. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's the way I sit, tend to do it with my food. I'm slightly disappointed now. I was thinking there's a way of getting a free Domino's now. If I just stand around the back of the wind, the main yeah, stand, bang out the window. That's... Just wait, because in six months' time, we'll probably be sick of the chef's food or whatever, Abby, <laughs> so you'll be getting that. <laughs> Pizza platters from VKH are getting thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone said, someone reckon, I seen on Twitter the other day, someone was on about, um, oh, what are the square pizzas in the marketplace? Uh, um on Freeman Street. No, uh, the one in Cleethorpes. Opposite, next oh, to... Oh, Vegas Grill. Yeah. Are they any good? I, I don't know, James. I'm an athlete. You can you not know, see by looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've seen how many curry houses around St. Peter's Square. He's not going anywhere near it. Yeah, to be fair. To be fair. 
Oh, oh that's that's slightly worrying. That lads, anyone got a question? Because uh, why? I guess actually, San Marino. I didn't. Was that a real thing? And how far along did that get? Because I mean, um, I was watching him going. He's not bad actually, there, keeper. <laughs> yeah, no. How good was he last time? With the play, was it England they played? He was really good. Yeah. I said yeah. to my missus, I said, oh, imagine that go for San Marino being on the bench for them. That'd be a new low. Um, no, it is a real thing. My uh, my mum's dad was from San Marino and I, I am eligible to play for him. Uh, his name was Rossini Morieka. I think that's how you say it. Um, but he left basically. When my mum was 13, her, her mum died and he left and went back to San Marino. So obviously my mum had never spoke to him since. Uh, she went into a children's home, long story, but like lost all contact. So when the link came about uh, through Dal Ladson, I think he knew a photographer at Juventus and that's how the sort of link happened. And they contacted and said that they basically needed a birth certificate or proof and went back to my mom and mom obviously was like, I haven't got anything. And, and that was the end of it, unfortunately. So unless someone comes off with his name, because I've had a look because it can't be that many Racine and Moriakos who came to England in what the late forties, early fifties, and then left. But I can't I just can't find the guy. So I, um, I was just yeah. assuming Moriako is just I've I've heard enough commentators butcher your surname in 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 the past as it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I um but yeah, so I mean listen, the the one the Outside of playing for Grimsby, playing when I played for Ireland was like one of the proudest moments of my life. Like, and I would love to have played for or been involved in the squads for them. Um, but I'm at the point now where I can't see, unless I've lost my number, I can't see a phone call coming. So, international football at any level for any team I, I'm taking. So, um, I qualify for Spain as well, but I don't think they're going to give me a call either. I mean. Uh, if you keep, if Henderson can keep De Gea off the bench and you can keep Henderson off the bench, I assume. I mean, that's how it works, is it not? Uh, do you know what? I might put that. That's it. That's it. I'm, I'm going to write him a letter. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I've seen you do what Unai Simon did the other day, Maka. To be fair. <laughs> ah, which was that? That was uh, the one where he went to control it and it rolled in instead. I think it was oh. Danny Collins, wasn't it, in front of the pontoon? I, did, I didn't even make the ball to get that one. I'm still chasing it now. Are you slightly worried that you're going to be mixed up between a steward sometime next season? Because, I mean, the that one, is day glow out orange. You are too standout. The best thing was, it seems someone put on Twitter about, oh, I hope that's not green. And I watched a montage of the Macron, uh, the, the kit launch, and I'm pretty sure it's in Nigel Batch running out in a green kit. And Nigel Batch one of our best ever goalies. And again, green can't be that unlucky for a goal at this football club. It's, um, it's, it's worth reminding everyone what we play on. <laughs> well, it's like, this is, I mean, the green thing, I know I know it's something to do with the fishermen. Uh, I, I do get that. But literally, the best goal is in our history of warm green. Like, I don't, I'm, I might be wrong about Steve Sherwood, but obviously I know Nigel Batch did. Um, and, oh, I'm having a memory blank. Edit this out. <laughs> That's all right. We're all really young. So, you know, we know, we know absolutely every goalkeeper past Paul Crichton. Paul Crichton. <laughs> uh, I think Davison must have had green on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, do you know what? You're probably right. and Because they were proper 90s kits, like David Seaman, Euro 96 kits, where someone yeah. has just gone mental and, and written anything and designed anything on the front. With a spray, a spray paint. So there was yeah. some green on one of them kits. I'm quite surprised they weren't actually one of those shirts you used to get in the 90s where you used to put a hand on it and then it used to change colour. Um, yes. <laughs> Just wondering, like, he's come back to me. It's Harry Wayman. I was trying to think of just so people don't think that I had forgotten, but he wore green as well. So, better, a lot better goalies than me have worn green for this club. So, maybe one day I'll get a, a green one. What was is which which one do you dislike the most? Was it this season's uh goal for yourself, or was it was it the Danny Collins one that really is, would they be classed as the, mm. the, the, the clangers? Danny, the Danny- the Dally, the Dally Collins one, I actually doesn't bother me at all because yeah, it's his fault. I was, yeah, it's his fault. <laughs> I mean, I was probably over, over outside where I needed to be. But in the grand scheme of things, if he looks, 
he plays it and he looks at me and passes it to me. No one is ever going to have this conversation because I'd have just kicked it. I'd have, even if I'd have missed it, going out for a goal kick or a corner. So it, the Danny Collins one was just a freak thing. The one where I passed it into my own net was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, I've had a few. Let's be honest. The one, the one that always stays in my mind weirdly was I, Gates had away in the playoff semi final, obviously. Um, oh yeah, of course. Was, yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. The uh, only reason that, I say that is it reminded me Danny Coyne had something similar for us against Blackburn, so he'd obviously yes, I've seen that. kicked ass. And Mark Hughes was the Welsh manager, and like for, we will obviously carry the baton for you now to join San Marino, but there was obviously a massive clamour for him to become way and. Obviously, Mark Hughes is there, Welsh manager, and within five minutes, it it just went through his arms. Is that he, he just looks around at the ponto and goes, "Well, that's that then, isn't it?" <laughs> See, I didn't I didn't know that because I I, I I must have watched that game the other week. It might have been on on this day, uh, and I watched it, um, and I seen that mistake because. I, I, a lot of the stuff I've watched of Coyne doesn't seem to make many mistakes, or didn't seem to make that many mistakes. Uh, but yeah, so they wanted Gateshead away, and we had Gateshead at home where Nathan Arnold scored two goals. We won two one, went one 0 down, and they had a cross in about the third minute, and it just it was in the it felt like it was in the sky for ages, and I just dropped it straight in my net. I mean, oh, geez, I could be here all night talking about how many well, goals. You, I've you can say that, but I'll be honest, I don't think I've met a. a I think Danny and yourself are in sort of almost tied for as a shot stopper. There aren't many better than you. And I think you're probably the best in the now in national league. And you're probably the best in league two as well as a shot stopper. It's what you can, have you always had those sort of reaction times? I mean, did, did a yeah. bottle of milk never get dropped in the house sort of thing? <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I think, or oh, if you're a goalie, you can save a shot. And then I, I think there's some goalies, that are what I would describe match winners. So when I've watched Danny Coyne, Danny Coyne was a match winner. Like, because it, oh, well, you're not going to be in goal if you can't save a shot. You're not going to be in goal if you can't kick it or you can't come for a cross. But then there's goalies. Like, I, I think the one thing that everyone would say that would stand out about Dean was Dean could come and take crosses. Like, if I can take a cross, Dean could take a cross at the next level, if you like, for example. Um, Paul Farman in, our, in League Two. Like, some keepers can kick it. We can all kick it. But Paul Farman can kick it to space like it's a joke. Like so, everyone has maybe their their little bit more of a strength. Um, but I do I do think there's shot stopping, and then there's match winning shot stopping. Uh, and like I say, Danny Coyne definitely had that when I look at it. And Peter Schmeichel was the one when I was growing up that I like absolutely idolised. And that was but I looked at him and he made so many mistakes and like technically was, but he could win matches by by himself. And and that's something that I used to just try and copy. Just not very successful. Yeah, Tom. Uh, yeah, I, I um I had a question about the FA Trophy because uh, it splits fans. I would be in the camp where I really want to win it, and obviously you've been to a couple of finals. Um, how how do the players feel about the trophy generally? I would want to play. I would want to play in it. I hate being rested and I would say the players want to play in it and want to win it. The checker trade I get because I think I, I think it's a disgrace that they've put in under 23 teams. It infuriates me. I, I can't stand it. Uh, but as a competition, that does give you a chance to get into Wembley. But I, I totally agree with the fact that I think that I just think it's a disgrace that there's under 23 teams in a in a first team tournament uh the, the FA trophy I don't get the the thing against it because we've been we've had two great days out at Wembley and it, it still rattles me a little bit that we lost to Halifax because I think like that was an opportunity to win at Wembley and no matter what we are I I will say I took it for granted a little bit we'd gone there four four times in like space for a few years like that's what we'd give now what I'd give now to go back one more time to Wembley um and we like, you know, let's let's not like mess around. Like we we want to we want to be at the top of the league this year. We don't want to be thinking, oh, we'll get in the playoffs. We want to be at the top of the league. So let's go to Wembley in the FA Trophy final because it's an unbelievable day. And like I know that's hard to remember when you might play Coval at home in the first round. Um, but all of a sudden you're in a 
like one game that always stands in my mind. We played Salisbury at home in the first, was it um not Salisbury? Oh we did play at home in the first leg, we won three now. Oh no. What year are we talking? When we went to the FA Trophy final, uh they used to wear a white kit down south. Oh Rex. Oh, oh Bogner Regis, was it? Dartford. No. Who? Dartford. Dartford, it was Dartford, yeah. yeah. And we won three nil. Um I think we scored like for miles out. I think Bradley Wood scored and Marcus Bettinelli was the goalkeeper who's now playing for Fulham. Uh, Western Supermare. Ch- yeah, we play Western Was that Was that Western Supermare the, uh, with Halifax? Yeah, so I've got 20, uh, Saturday, 16th of January. We'd beaten Welling 4-0 the, the week before and then we'd played Western Supermare. Won the second round, won 3-1. And then we beat Altrincham the week after 5 0. Sounds like you didn't have that much of a busy week. It was a good week, <laughs> weren't it? Yeah, um, but I, I, I just think like you've got an opportunity to play at Wembley, so why not make the most of it? Like every time you go there is a day in your club's history and it's a day in your your career that you, you can't imagine. Like, and, like I am proud now when like, I speak and I can say to someone, oh, yeah, I've played at Wembley four times. Well, I'll, <laughs> I've lost three of them, like, but. Um, <laughs> It, like I just, I just think that you should never, should never shy away from the opportunity to go and play there ever. What was? How did you feel during the penalty shootout in against Bristol Rovers? Like, did you have? Was there a plan in place? Did you know which way? Did you have a left, right? Obviously, after after the wreck, some one way I'd gone the wrong way every time. Um, that doesn't stick control, in your mind, does it? No, it does. I've only times I bought it up. I, um, I, I just, I, I wanted. The, the one thing when I when I wanted to become a goalkeeper was I wanted to save a penalty at Wembley and obviously I'd had the opportunity, ballsed it up and then that Bristol Rovers one, I just thought this is it, like this is it, I can actually, this is my one time where I might actually be a hero, I, I can't, like I'm going to save one and I, I, I think I went the right way for four out of the five but barring Matty Taylor's, I'm not sure I'd, I'd save him but I just remember lying there after the last one and I just I just thought, I'd, I, even now, no matter what anyone will ever say to me, I, I just feel like I let everyone down that day because that was like my chance at redemption. I had this conversation with my wife actually yesterday. We was watching Gareth Southgate and I said, like, I don't think you can underestimate from him going and missing a penalty for England to beat in Germany in the Euros at Wembley. Like, not many people get that shot at redemption with, with sport in, in that respect where you feel like literally as low as you possibly can feel. For him to have that redemption and achieve it, like as an individual, as a human being, like I almost related to it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I just remember, I remember Christian Jolly for something it just sticks in my mind. Christian Jolly come up to me and like sort of put his arm around me, but it just doesn't matter what anyone says. You're like JP when JP missed the penalty, he's a great picture of all the lads sort of going round him, but it won't make any difference because you just feel like that was your moment. The one thing that I would say is that when we practice penalties in the build up to that. JP was the one player that didn't have a set position that he was going. Everyone else practiced the same penalty, even at the point where we'd done it and I knew where they were going. So I would like probably make more saves because I knew they were going that side. Whereas JP would go down the middle, he'd go left and right. And I think on the day, I think that showed. Because like you look at Clay's pen and Dizzy's pen that day, they knew where they were going like, and they went there. So that was the only probably disappointment, really. Man, do you know what? That's really... That's really heartbreaking to hear. I'm a, I, I'm as vocal as the next person. Like Matt Green will know if I'm if I think you're rubbish, you'll know it. But I I don't hold you any like eighty percent of those you're never going to save. I know it doesn't matter coming from me, but it was I, the only one I remember was when John Paul missed it. He went over to is it Anne Boyers who takes the photos? Yeah, yeah. He he was he was having a hug with her, and then the next season when we went up, he he was basically stood in the same spot with her having a hug. I wish I'd got a photo. The, yeah, the season really before, incredible. but I, I, do you know, I'd, I would have never have even come into my head that you were responsible for I like penalty shooting. No, I, I'm like, I, I just, it's just sort of something that lives with you. Like, and like I say, like, I mean, JP had the courage to stand up and take one, and like, someone will always miss. And like, I would never hold anyone to account for missing a penalty, but you put your own pressures on people, and that's what like, I go back to earlier when I was saying about like people talk about having competition and stuff. 
it's what you put on yourself. Like you don't, it doesn't sometimes matter the noise and stuff that goes on. It's what you feel in maybe your own head or your personality. And and that's that's what I just, the smut that I'll always live with really. So I'd like to go back. It'd be nice to go back in the FA Trophy final and save a penalty and win. Have you ever thought of taking one? Kevin Pressman it. I, I did, didn't I? I took one. Oh, did you? <laughs> Thank, thankfully, oh. obviously we had no fans in the ground last season. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, of course you did. Oh, Christ. I, I, I've erased last season, if I'm being entirely honest. Oh, just for self-preservation. <laughs> I, um, the, the thing was, I was actually after JP when we played at Wembley. Um, oh, were you? I'm, I'm actually not bad at them, but obviously my one against Morecambe, I've ripped myself off now forever. So, um, Surely we've got to get but, yeah. a rule in. After three, if we're three nil up at any point next season, we get a penalty. Surely they've got to let you, you know, sprint up and then let Pearson just go and go for for five five minutes as rush keeper. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe the test. Maybe I could get one in the testimonial. <laughs> I remember I went to my dad. Like we went to Mark Lever's testimonial. It was one of the. He's like, my dad, this is brilliant. Like they tie the goalkeeper to the post. Uh, like. Someone comes on dressed as a fisherman. It's hilarious. It was the most boring match in the world. And it took till about the 89th minute until someone realised, like, oh, hang on a minute. He's got to have a penalty, hasn't he? I think he had to take it twice because the first one was saved. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, I don't know how uh, long uh, Mac has got, but um, first and foremost, I think you and John McDermott should have an arm wrestle at the Broadley game to see who owns the uh, nickname Macca, um, or, or find uh, some he- sort of way of doing it. <laughs> he he owns it. I can assure you of that. He's <laughs> so because I got asked in the paper the other day. They were like, "Oh, would you? Uh, do you know? Have you got his record appearances in sight?" I was like, "There's no ch- like his <laughs> record is absolutely unbelievable. It's something like uh, this. This was from Sean. This was, but it's something like forty games a year for twenty odd years. I mean, it is staggering what he achieved, and to survive that many managers probably shows how good of a player and professional he was." It's it's a mad that we never retired that number. Like when when he went, like the idea that I would have if I was the manager, I'd have put the team out and forgotten to pick a right back because I'd have just. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what though? I couldn't agree more. Like I I think there should be, I think there should be more at the club for Alan Buckler and John McDermott. And like I think that probably happened moving forward. But there should be and like the past is what. The, the, the most important thing, fans, fans are the ones that are here long after us as players and managers. But when people have like done what John McDermott's done and Alan Buckley's done, like there they should be something. I, I, I don't know what, but a, a minimum, a brick with the name on it, an absolute bare minimum. But I just think it'd be a nice a nice thing to do um, But at some point. But yeah, there we go. Um, you just touched on the, uh, the testimonial game, uh, Macca. So obviously with it being your testimonial year and everything, how does that work? So do, do the club approach you about it or is, and, and then do you have to organise all the events yourself? No, so you get like put forward for it. So you get nominated by someone who says that they think you're deserving of it after 10 years. And then I've had to like select a committer. Um, so on my committee is Steve Dennis, uh, who's a friend of mine, uh, John Tonda, Will Douglas from Dr. Beers, uh, Nigel Lowther, Chris Greencock from Wolfram and Chapman who used to play for us um, and Rob Smith. So they are basically the ones who now run it and organise everything. And oh, Lloyd Griffith, Jesus, he'll kill me. <laughs> I've missed the biggest name. Please, um, please don't let him play in goal. <laughs> no, well, the, the game, the game is like a proper game. But, oh, is it? So he's not allowed. But I think hopefully we'll have a comedy night with him at some point and they 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 plan everything basically. I'm not I'm not really allowed to have it. Sounds like to do a stag do. It. <laughs> it, it, it basically is a party for a year, hopefully. Um occasions where I can get drunk. Um and then at the end of the year, I think we're gonna have like a black tie dinner where like we do some bits for charity as well, because uh Harbour Place charity. So it'll be it'll be it'll be really good. Like I said, I haven't had to do loads, but the, the things that I have to do are like back to like photos and some filming and stuff. So um but yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Like, absolutely, so lucky to get it. So lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Has anybody got any questions? I mean, I, I'm gl- grateful we haven't touched on last year really that much. But has anyone got any more questions before we go? I think we've touched. I think we've covered most of the ones on the the thingy. Uh, 
one about punching the ball. Is there a reason why keepers now have a tendency to punch the ball rather than try and Steve Agrusevich it and catch it? I I would say there's two things. I think English English goalie mentality is to a degree to still try and catch it in general. Then I watched Pickford last night actually against Ukraine and there was one like straight at him and he just like jumped and parried it. I just think I think the ball is like it moves probably a lot more than what people realise. Um, and I just think it's a safety thing really because realistically, like I say, the, the mistakes we've spoken about that I've made are ones that I've dropped in general. So, like, I think that that is a just part of the game. Uh, foreign goalies have done it for years, and yeah, I just think that's what it is. Um, I've got one. Yeah, go ahead. What was the 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 thing that stopped me from going to Motherwell? Because that would have been an opportunity to play, uh, albeit the qualifying stages, European Cup football that year, um, which would have been, uh, I guess, a highlight of your career had that come around. Yeah, I uh, like. I think I've said it before. Like, I'm not. I don't want to sit here and like lie. And like, we were close. Like, we went up and looked around. Um, the offer was there. It was a better offer than I had from Grimsby. Uh, I just I was, I don't want to sound like a sickly, horrible individual. But like, it, this place is like it is important. Like, like it's massive to me. Like, it's massive to us as a family. And like, it's become our become our life it would take a massive thing and like professionally I would probably argue at the time going and playing in the SPL if I had the opportunity to play in the SPL is a bigger shot window like the the person who actually ended up going they took Mark Gillespie instead and he's now at Newcastle which doesn't bother me one bit um, but like you, <laughs> you you are going into a, a shot window like you say you've got potential to play in Europe Um so professionally, it probably would have been, I'd argue, like the next step for me. But I think there's a lot to be said for just being happy, being happy, your family being happy, like yeah. me being happy going into work every day. Um, and, you know, like un- under Michael, when we had Michael Jolly, uh, it was strange at times. Like, I'll be honest, it was it was strange at times. But in general, like I, I enjoyed it. Like he was, you know, for me, like he sort of let me get on with, the goalkeeping and whatever and uh, I just felt like at that point I'd sort of started to cement myself a little bit more at the club and whatever so it, it was a tough decision but I don't regret it at all like not one bit but what I will say is that was a, a great a great club and like a really good setup up there I mean you've, you've dodged a bullet obviously because you could have been sort of lining up with Kevin Van Veen uh, next season <laughs> Is that where he's gone? Yeah he's gone to Motherwell I didn't even know that. I thought he was, might have been going to Bradford. But, um, I heard he was going to Grimsby, but I'm glad. <laughs> that wouldn't have gone down well. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I, I don't want to keep you for too long. Uh, like, what last season, were there any warning signs at all? Because from the general consensus, everything went pretty well before, like, COVID. Well, it seemed out from the outside anyway. Were there any sort of warning signs that things were, hang on, lads, this isn't good? Because you'd never really experienced that, was really? No, like, uh, and again, I want to be totally honest. It was a car crash from minute one. Um, like, but I think he spoke such a good game that I, I understand why people got maybe sucked into it. But when we came, well, the biggest thing for me, because as captain, I was peer favorite, or I'm peer, well, was peer favorite, because peer favorite don't want anything to do with you know you're in non league. Um, when the we were asking to get take the pay cuts, I spoke to him and he said, "Oh, it's only a wage deferral." I was like, "Okay, so we we get the money back." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next night, we're on call in front of the chairman, and it was a wage cut, and we were taking a wage cut, and it's like, "Well, hold on, that's quite a big difference, really." Now all of a sudden. And this went on for months and months and it was just, that was a bad start. And that, that again, that's not really much to do with him himself. Um, but like, I mean, I think it was, I think it was around the South End game away when I'd come out of the team for a few games. He was, Sam was playing, so though, like what is my goalie coach was playing and he was signing a French goalie that he hadn't seen play. who hadn't had a club for 18 months from a video he'd seen. And I was, and this is an example on me, like to do with me. And I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. 
And then a week later, I'm back playing in the team and he's bringing in a new goalie coach because he said that's what I needed. And it's like, it was just, it was one extreme to the other. And I stood with Dave in pre-season and I just said to Dave more, I was like, I hope this conversation doesn't come out, but I, I, I worry for us. And like Dave will know more about football than I'll ever know. And he said the same thing, but you obviously always hope. And like we had that one week after the COVID shutdown where we beat Drew Bolton, beat Cheltenham away on the Tuesday and beat Leighton Orient. And it was like, oh my God, we're not bad here, you know. But then, but then like things would happen where like, I mean, <laughs> I trumped me away when we were 4 0 down. And he come in at half time and he he literally he couldn't speak. He just lost his words. And it was just like like it was just one extreme to the other. And it was just really hard to sort of get a as a player and as a group any sort of consistency going. It was just, you know, things would happen and you'd think that can't happen in a professional football club. And it, it wasn't. Listen, we all we all make mistakes, and yeah. I'm like I'm. I think from. I don't think he was a bad a bad guy at all. Um, and you take people where you find them, and I will say this like publicly, like in terms of John, I know John's got had a lot of stick, and like you take people how you find them. I got paid on time, every month in my entire time under him. Um, yeah, contract talks were really tough. Like, but he's a successful businessman, so he's always gonna be. Um, but he was always very good to me, like as an individual. So you take people you find them. The flip side is I'm not an idiot and I see what happens. So I see I try and see things from both sides as much as you possibly can. But I just think that from from the minute COVID hit last year, uh whenever it was, we just got so many things wrong on and off the pitch. So, so many things wrong. And it was just, it was one thing after another. And it to go down out of that league last year, and I don't want to disrespectful because we were the worst team and we deserved to yeah. go down. Um, but that was as bad a standard I thought I've seen league to like, there was not many great teams in it. And for us to come bottom says absolutely everything about us. I, I certainly felt that sort of, the last 10 games or so we were just a regular mid-table outfit sort of we, if, if that team had started the season there's no bells and whistles on it really but it had been a comfortable 15th 16th sort of what we'd been finishing before well I should have, I said this to a lot of people at the time like we were picking up decent away points like we were doing okay and like exactly what you say if we'd have been 12th in the league we'd have been looking thinking couple of wins we can maybe make the playoffs but we wouldn't have made the playoffs we wouldn't have got them couple of wins we'd have just been that safety mid-table exactly what you're saying mid-table team if we'd have finished with a couple of wins we'd have finished higher if we'd have finished with losses we'd have finished a bit lower because the team that they got but it just obviously it, it, and even now like obviously off the pitch we're making massive changes but it just needed a huge huge overall um it, the, the biggest thing, like you, you said it earlier, like there was so many players, like so, so many players. Like it, it, you can't possibly make that room. many players happen. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, it's mad because like, literally, I remember looking at the group chat and there was like 30 odd players. I'm like, <laughs> like, in League Two, 30 odd players. No wonder you no wonder you, we, we felt your form dip because you were too busy adding people into the group. <laughs> 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 do uh, do any of the players ever say to Dave Moore in like January or February, are you cold? <laughs> Stick a coat on. <laughs> you know what? Every year, every year, new signing, I'll have a look at him at some point and be like, is he all right? I'm like, I promise you, he's not doing that for show. He's just the hardest man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, do you know what I have seen though? I've seen one little side to him with his grandkids that I never knew was there, but he's actually really soft with his grandkids. He probably won't worth the original. Probably, but, <laughs> but honestly, but outside of that, he is. But do you know what? Like, if I want an honest answer above anyone I've ever met in football, it will be Dave. I always said, like, if I ever got the, the job, I'd ask him to be my director of football because he is the most honest, straight man you could ever wish to meet. And he will tell you, if you've been shit, you, you know, the, <laughs> when he says to me after a game, you could have saved that. 
And I'm just, I, I might as well, even if I think I, I couldn't have saved it, I'd just say, yeah, because I don't want to disagree with him. He's, um, oh, Jesus, he's some guy. That's another one. Him and, him and his whole family probably should have a statue outside the club. Just, Is it just this week, James, you get the beast in off Dave? Pre-season? Uh, do you know what we used to... Oh, God, I hope this don't come this week. Oh, my, that's reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the this gap is not, was here we're not doing time, very well. <laughs> when the gaff was here first time, we used to, like, we'd go for a warm-up with Dave, uh, uh, an afternoon session with Dave, and the start would be core. We'd do, like, a plank. You'd plank for about 15 minutes, right? And I'm looking up. Obviously, I didn't know him as well then. I'm like, how's he doing this? Like, you got lads shaking, putting knees on the floor. Like, when he when Dave turns around, they're dropping on the floor for a breather. How long did Scott not Nielsen moving. last? <laughs> oh, he'd, he'd pull an injury in. But uh, Dave, oh, my God, the guy's a machine. We went for a, went, <laughs> went for a run one day. We, <laughs> with Rob Scott went for a call day and he took us to the Wolds. Dave did. Dave took us on this run. And Rob Scott had to say, oh, no, no, let's not go for a run. Let's go for a fart lick and we'll do some walking in between. <laughs> He's made us oh. something else. He's made a granite. Like, oh, yeah. my word. <laughs> I've never met a man like him. Is there nah. any, um, lads, anything else to add before? I mean, I assume Mac has got to put his kids to bed at some point. Like, <laughs> they're hoping they're asleep already. <laughs> Um, what is that? Is there anything over? I mean, your career's hardly over. Uh, it's like, is there? Is there anything you took for granted, like over the last ten years? What do you think the one thing, looking back, did we t- at the club? I'm, like I say, I think I think definitely. Do you know? What? I think two, well, three things actually have just come to my mind. Uh, going to Wembley, I think for okay. me personally, took for granted. Uh, I think fans. I, obviously, I've never imagined of that feeling of playing in front of no fans. But my God, it's horrendous! Like horrendous! Like the sooner someone comes back and boos me, the better, because it has been horrendous. Uh, and I think, I think as a club, I think after my first year here, I think as a football club, we got we did get used to winning games of football, and I mean that in a good way. I think we should get used to winning games of football. But then what happened is we got promoted. We didn't capitalise on it. And then we got used to losing games of football. And we started to get an acceptance to, oh, it's Forest Green there at the top of the league. That's OK. We've lost that game. It's like, hold on a minute. It's Forest Green. We've got 20 fans. Like, I don't care. Like, about it. we're playing Forest Green. We're at home. We're Grimsby. Like, and I think I think that acceptance sort of grew a little bit. And I mean, hopefully, hopefully like I say, we're, we're out of that now. And no, I know the gap and now he works and he, he will not accept anything less than no matter who we go and play this season, no matter where they are in the league, we'll be going to win a game. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, man, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's I, I, by the sounds of it, you might not be next week if uh, Moro's there with his, uh, with a, I don't know, like some whipping hand, I guess, some sort of oh, riding crew. Do you know, one one day, I, one we, we had Russell Slade and the game had got snowed off and it was a Thursday and he'd give us to the Monday off. But the carrot for getting to the Monday off was that Dave was taking us for a run and it got snowed off. And we ran from the ground to uh, the leisure centre. I had to play football on the beach and run back. But every couple of mi- every mile or whatever, he'd get down and do press ups or core and we'd have to carry on running. And I- I'm not exaggerating to you, Nate. It, it was a tough run anyway. People were running, it was that cold. People were running three, three coats and he had shorts on. He had a hat on, but he had shorts on. That's been, that's I have been, never bit. been so cold in my life. That's, I Is mean, any consolation? My dad went to school with him, and apparently uh, he was just like that at school as well. Like he'd be, you know, they all played football together, and he'd be there like before the game doing press ups and that in the dressing room before they went out and stuff. So that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pass my consolations on to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's fitter for it. I'd like to see like any just go to the most uh, pessimistic fishy posters, the ones that really give grief, and then just get the, the punishment every season is they have to do a training session with Dave Moore just to sort of you know, and the players can sit and watch from the main stand, just just throwing abuse as we're all we're all farting out of our ass after about 35 seconds and he's still sort of hanging off the goalpost. Aww. Um, man, I, uh, first, Jack Johnson has asked me as well, if anybody would like to do Macca a greater service um, and, and 
do anything for the program which will come up for the testimonial we would be delighted to hear from you um so um please do send in anything uh we'll happily it will happily get it in there because sounds like it's going to be a bumper edition um as, as macca's year-long stag do is is underway <laughs> um man it's been a genuine pleasure thank you so much no thank you genuinely thank you for having me i've been waiting to come on for a long time so yeah oh, for, really the, the, the the invitation is always open i mean even I'll if i'll just I'm do so... a jack spring next time i'll just pop in say hello yeah just say like, <laughs> i mean that's all he ever does uh um old joe old joe likes it um and <laughs> so yeah thank you everyone for listening um i was gonna say it comes out in a couple of weeks but you're listening to it now uh thank you very much see you later uh, I um, stop. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Oh no! Right. Hang on. I've stopped.